This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. How do you deal with the fear, dread, and anxieties of living? What about the uncertainties, bewilderments, and perplexing confusions of human existence? There's an old verse. At 20, I had all the answers. At 30, I had some doubt. At 40, I wished some 20-year-old would tell me what it's all about. But what if you had the opportunity of talking with someone whose wisdom was eternal? And the truth is that you can, because you can talk with God. And through the years of your human life, God will tell you many things, but not everything. But why not everything? Some issues the theologians and philosophers for thousands of years have simply defined as mysteries. Nobody has the answers to some questions. The incarnation, the divine becoming human, is but one of countless examples. You may come to understand it better in the eons of eternity, but there are many such things nobody on earth comprehends. Then there are the secrets of the universe, things which are known on high but which are not disclosed to the mortals of flesh and blood because sometimes such information might be injurious to the successful undertaking of your life projects. There is a proverb, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. And so it is with some of your puzzlements. God may wisely withhold some information because it might temporarily deprive you of the incentive or the aspiration to press on with your life. Suppose you were born with an incurable genetic disease, which the angels knew would cause your death by the time you were 30 years of age. But suppose that you also possessed a brilliant scientific mind and that you were fully capable, with diligent application, of discovering the final cure for cancer before you died. But if you were told by some unwise guardian seraphim that you didn't have long to live, it might wreak such havoc with your human emotions and your delicate mortal psychology that you might fall into such deep depression or such a devil-may-care fatalistic attitude that you would never fulfill your true potential life work. Overmuch knowledge of some factors in your future could be inimical to the true achievement of what God wants for you to achieve in your life. And there is no other solution to this problem other than the complete and utter wholehearted trust of God. Regardless of the problems, counterindications, vexations, and perplexing confusions of the moment. And I do mean of the moment. For taken over the long view in the perspective of the decades and of an entire mortal lifetime, you begin to understand that some of the apparent failures of your life were just that, apparent failures. Moments in your forward struggle which may have seemed at the time to be crushing defeats but which were but preludes to larger victories. Military historians for centuries have observed that great generals frequently may lose a battle but win the war. You may in your lifetime repeatedly lose many battles, but yet still win the war. The ongoing struggle against evil, sin, hatred, cruelty, and anger, doubt, despair, and discouragement. As a believer in God, your greatest battle will be against doubt. But if you will trust in God and endeavor with all sincerity to follow the instructions which are spiritually imparted to you concerning your life mission and God's plans for your years on this planet, you may be assured that though you lose a hundred battles, though you experience apparent defeat over and over again, you will most assuredly achieve the final victory, which is attainable only by those who sincerely believe and who have made themselves available to God to go anywhere, to do anything, and be anything, God wants them to go and do and be. You will discover that even in the midst of mental uncertainty, there can be spiritual security. And if you adhere valiantly to the will of God as the ideal and the goal of your life, you may be certain that things will turn out right for you. Of course, it will require courage and determination and you will encounter many doubts, questions, and harassments from others. But hold fast to your faith. Said Jesus, have faith in God. Again, he said, fear not, be not anxious, be of good cheer, and my peace I give to you. Jesus did not promise freedom from troubles, but he did promise to go through all those troubles with you at your side.
inspiring, strengthening, and stimulating your thinking and your spiritual life so that you can meet these problems and master them. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And remember that one person with God is a majority. Think clearly, pray ceaselessly, meditate on God, and keep your heart and soul open to the will and guidance of your Heavenly Father who loves you so. God's will for you is good. God cares about your life and your future. But then remember that it requires both faith and courage to stand for the truth as you have learned it and as you have experienced it. Be willing to take a stand for what you believe and keep standing by what you believe without faltering or failing and do not be deceived by what others may say or may not say. For truth is not determined by majority vote. If what you believe is wrong, a million other people swearing, a million other people swearing that you're right will simply make no difference. And if what you believe is right, a million million people crying that you're wrong will not make any difference one way or the other because truth is not decided by majority. And time and again through the annals of human history, brave believers, heroic men and women of faith have had to stand for what they believed against seemingly overwhelming opposition. And so may you, such scientific giants as Galileo, Giordano Bruno, and Copernicus, faced the criticism of both ecclesiastical leaders and the scientific community of their day for holding and enunciating their beliefs. Jesus of Nazareth was opposed by both his own Jewish religion and by the weight of the entire Roman Empire, yet he was right, and his message has stood the test of time and the judgment of the centuries. Politicians think about the next election. Statesmen think about the next generation. And true spiritual statesmen and stateswomen are willing to suffer much for the honor of serving God on the very highest possible levels. Willing to endure unpopularity, financial loss, expulsion, and even physical death in order to stay true to their convictions. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And remember well that the final judgment of who is right and who is wrong and what is right and what is wrong is the judgment of history, of history, not the passing opinion of the moment. Stand by your honest convictions and let God be the determiner of the outcome. You cannot always know the answers. In a few days or months or years, there's an old poem that goes, place up somewhere where you can see the cryptic admonishment TTT. -T -T. When you worry about how slowly you climb, always remember things take time. There it is. Things take time. Don't make premature judgments about yourself. Leave those determinations to God who loves you. Be true to the best you know. And leave the rest to God. Do the best you are able, and all other things will take care of themselves. Have faith and hope and love. Do the best you are able, and you will face the future with a clear conscience and an energized soul. Do all you are able, and then give the future to the one who creates the future. Your Heavenly Father, God, who loves you tremendously beyond your ability to comprehend. Give your future to God. You can do no other. That's all you can do. Do that and then press forward into the future with faith and trust. Do that and you have done all you can do. Be spiritually renewed by the power and the ongoing purposes of God and all things will become new for you as God's Spirit works its transformative renewal within your mind and in your life. Every great human being who has ever lived has faced difficulties, problems, and perplexing confusions. Abraham Lincoln at one point became so depressed that he couldn't work or be around other people. John the Baptist was imprisoned and beheaded. Paul was beaten and jailed. 
The prophets were killed and Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated and the list goes on and on and on. Do not expect that seeking to follow the will of God for your life will be easy, for it will not. But if you will endure to the end, you shall have the vindication of deeper understanding and life everlasting. And it is written that the race is not always to the swift nor the battle to the strong. There are higher processes at work than the bewilderments and apparent failures of this world, for there is victory on high for those who will give their lives to the living God in trusting, trusting faith. So may you live your days and your years with the soul-born joy of knowing the God who rules all things, even the universes. You may not know what the future holds, but you know who holds the future. You are a son or daughter of this living God who has a wonderful will for your life and everlasting life lying before you. May that God rule your mortal life, beginning right here and right now and for all eternity. It is the supreme joy of existence to find and know the God who is your father and your friend. This broadcast could go on and on and on. There's so much to be said on this. But if you're intrigued by these things, write to us for some free literature on the spiritual life. Write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God and the Brotherhood of Man. All this literature, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address, Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.